Welcome everybody, in this video we are going to be talking about Identity Server 4 and whether you need it or not. In the light of recent news where Identity Server licensing got updated, where it is basically free to use up until your company earns less than a million. As soon as your company earns a million or more, you have to pay for Identity Server, but that's a pretty long journey to take. Identity Server being a good viable option for the free tier, a lot of people are going to start looking at it again and going to turn their heads away from OpenDIC3 and other frameworks. Back when I made the tutorials, I've seen a lot of people misuse Identity Server, so I'm going to take this opportunity. If a lot of people are going to start looking for Identity Server again, I want you to understand you might not actually need it. There are specific scenarios where Identity Server will be a really good solution Otherwise, if you're just picking up Identity Server for the wrong reasons, you have all this extra complexity that you don't really need. So let's start with simple applications and work our way up to complex applications so we clearly understand where the line stands, where it actually starts to make sense to even consider Identity Server and whether we need it. We're going to start with a regular server-side rendered application, right? You make a request to the backend, the backend gives you back a page. And that's it, the browser renders the HTML. Hopefully we can all agree, you don't need an identity server here. There is only one client and the authentication process is very simple. Post credentials, get back a cookie, simple enough. Moving on, you're gonna say, right, uh, static pages are no longer any good, we're living in 2022 and we need SPA applications. Sure, they can still be server side rendered, but now you're living in the area of API on the back end and then SPA. Either one of those can trigger you to think that you may need an identity server. Specifically, you have one connecting element, which are JWTs, JSON Web Tokens. Just because you have an API or just because you have a SPA application, you may start thinking, I need a JSON Web Token and just because I need a JWT, I now need an identity server. No, you do not need an identity server for this reason. You do not even need a JWT Cookies are still fine. Some people, once they've read about JWTs, they've now defined this as the gold standard and riddled all cookies unsecure. That is not the case moving forward, even from today's date, cookies are still a secure solution. JWTs are not the standard and they're definitely not a requirement if you're building an API and a SPA. Your application is doing good, right? Your API is growing, your front end is growing, uh, your project manager comes along and he's like, yo dude, you know what would be cool? A mobile application, that's right. All the kids are on their phones these days, nobody's surfing the web. We need to have our presence on the app store. We need a mobile app. And you say, yes, of course, but first I'm gonna need to implement an identity server for that single sign-on and client management. And you couldn't be further from the truth. You do not need an identity server if you're introducing a mobile application. Just because you have two clients for a single service doesn't mean you need an identity server. Now, some people, again, same as with the RESTful APIs and SPAs, they will hear a mobile or a native application and they're gonna think, all right, this is no longer a browser. We're leaving the browser world. It's time for a JWT. And just because it's JWT, like, right, I need an identity server, right? I've seen so many people just roll down the same hill. I don't know what it is with JWTs and identity server, but you don't need a JWT to secure your web application. Your user authentication session is the data. Cookies and JWTs are values. They represent your authentication session with a specific value. Same authentication session, same data, two values, two different representations. Send credentials to your backend, get back the value, store it, attach it to every request. Whatever your backend is built to recognize, cookies or JWTs, use that same thing. You don't need to migrate to one or the other one. ASP.NET Core has its own application programming interface for JWT tokens. You do not need to fall into identity server as soon as you hear JWTs. As far as client management goes, so let's say you have two applications, two clients, and you're like, I need an identity server to manage those clients. No, you don't. You own those two things, and it's okay to hard code something. The reason we create configurations, the reason we offset things to databases is because those things are going to change way faster than we can write code. Unless you're going to be adding or subtracting 10 hundreds of applications and this number is, is constantly going to vary, you do not need an identity server. Speaking of multiple services and multiple applications, 
we're now going to step towards your solution growing forward. This is no longer just one spa and one mobile application. Your service, single service, although let's consider an example like Facebook, you may have multiple applications like Facebook and Messenger. And then you may have front ends, which are also composable. Again, just the regular Facebook app and the Messenger. So that's already four front ends sort of composed together. And then you have an API and a bunch of services behind that API. So first, let's take a look at the back end because that's a really easy one to discard. You're like, I have a lot of services. They talk with each other and I need to make sure that it's secure when they talk to each other. So I have to use client credential flow and you don't need to. Okay, you don't need to, you can discard at any server here. And specifically for microservices and cloud infrastructure, you can use firewall rules and really protect communication between your infrastructure on the infrastructure level. You don't need to bring in identity server and that configuration. Now let's talk about multiple clients. Again, as I've said, it's a different swim lane. We create configuration and databases because that data is going to change faster than we write code. Just because you have four applications and you want single sign on all, on all of them, you do not need identity server. Identity server is for managing clients. There is no management going on here. You have four clients and it's okay to have a single configuration that sort of says, all right, you're on this domain. You have this key when you are communicating with the backend, etc. Identity server brings no value here. Stepping further, we're now going to multiply this type of service where single service, but it's comprised of multiple elements. Let's say we have three columns. These are all uh, services there. They stand on their own, but you as a company, you own all of them. Well, we'll take a Google example where you have Google authentication. You can use that to sign into YouTube, Gmail, and let's say Google Calendar. Three services that do not really interact. Gmail and Google Calendar do, but let's say that they don't. As soon as you're in this space where you have multiple services, it's very easy to look at Google and be like, oh, okay, well, Google has single sign-on. We want single sign-on like this as well. And people instantly go to identity server. This is the first part where you need to pay attention. Do all of your applications sit on the same domain or on different subdomains? Are you cutting these services by the domain? If you are, it is very easy to implement single sign-on if everything is on the same domain. You don't need to go into identity server. However, as soon as you're stepping in into territory where your services exist on different domains, this is where managing cookies and dealing out cookies for different domains is gonna get very painful and this is where the first time you're going to be like, okay, single sign on with identity server is going to be a lot easier. We don't need to bring in the database or anything like that to manage clients. Those are pretty much static configuration. Again, we do not have that growth of clients where let's say you're GitHub and you have a, a bunch of people that want to build UIs that interact with GitHub and allow you to pull code and push code into your repository on GitHub, right? So they need integration with GitHub. And a lot of people are building external applications that extend your application or integrate with your application. This is where you will actually need identity server client management solution. This is when you need to take your configuration, you can no longer have it static and you need to expose this configuration of which clients, which applications, what resources are they requesting and give this to the users. They should be able to come to GitHub and be like, right, I'm creating an application. This is what it's called. This is the redirect URI etc. Here's my client ID. Here's my secret key. This is something that you're going to need to generate on the back end, but that's what they grab. And then they can go through the authentication flow. This is the scenario where clients can grow and subtract. They're going to have their development environments, their production environments. They're going to create applications. They're going to test. They're going to remove these applications. You definitely don't want that a static configuration. However, if you are in a scenario where all the applications belong to you and that size isn't growing, it's okay to have identity server for single sign-on, but you don't need to do the full integration where you're like, write dynamic databases, build the UI for it, right? You don't need to make that complexity. You don't need to take that on. You don't need consent screens. Everything belongs to you. Under this same roof of implementing single sign-on falls legacy or acquisition software. So let's say you have some legacy applications that you know you want to bring under single sign-on. You essentially, well, you give them the token, they wrap this token, in whatever authentication session that system implements and now just do the redirect flow. If you have acquisition, let's say you're Facebook, you're acquiring Instagram. Applications have been growing in different directions. You do the same thing. Instagram can now receive a token from Facebook, wrap it in its own session 
and off you pop. And the last point, really a closing note, this is where you don't really need my advice on whether you need an identity server or not. Your company is so big, you have so many people authenticating with your service, you're basically saying all these other services can use our accounts to log in. This is where you're either Facebook, GitHub, Microsoft, Google, or Twitter. This is where allowing third parties to authenticate with your accounts from your platform makes sense. This is it on Identity Server. Hopefully you're clear about whether you need an identity server or not. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section or come ask them on my Discord server. YouTube removes comments, so it's a bit of a gamble if you comment on here. Join for my live streams. All the links are in the description. Have a good day.